Oh, good day, everyone, and welcome to a big edition of Crowcast Weekend Wrap. This week, of course, we're uh, in the lead up to the AFL draft for 2020. Uh, a very interesting draft uh, given the circumstances this year. So, without further ado, why don't we just crack right into it, shall we? G'day, 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 and welcome to the Weekend Wrap, the uh, AFL Draft Preview edition of the Weekend Wrap. And joining me tonight is Macca. How you going, Mac? Oh, I'll take you off mute, mate, because we want to hear what you got to say. How you going, Mac? <laughs> we'll start take two and uh, flying high and looking forward to Wednesday when it all is going to happen. Absolutely. Look, uh, g'day to everyone who's on... Uh, discord and joining us through youtube and also uh twitch uh we're not on facebook tonight but uh hopefully the people on facebook will get around us on youtube or twitch um g'day kempi g'day vardy magic uh g'day sc on discord don't forget if you want to uh if you want to watch uh what's happening on uh um oh something's going on there we'll just go back to the to here um, yeah, if you want to uh, chat along, you don't actually have to be in uh, Discord. You can go to aflcrowcast.com, go to the live chat page, and you will be able to follow your nose and get into our Discord channel without even having to be on Discord. So that's a good time. Um, now, Maka, how you been for the last couple of weeks? A bit going on. Yeah, there's been there has been a lot going on, and it's been very interesting and uh, a lot of speculation and. Uh, the Crows have done a little bit of manipulation, but nothing major at this stage. But one senses that, well, they have openly stated that uh, there are three possibilities with them. One is they stay where they are. Uh, they would like opportunity to trade up and they'll look at opportunities to trade down. So um, uh, and I think we'll probably discuss all that tonight. Yeah, I mean, we've never been in this position, of course, so at rarefied air, and it's not the position you want to be in terms of your season's results, but when it gets to this time of the year, it's quite exciting, isn't it? And uh, having two picks inside the top 10 and, uh, you know, four in, inside the top 25 is uh, a pretty good position uh, for us, and uh, it's a shame, I guess, that this draft is tainted by corona and the fact that probably 70 percent of the lads haven't had football for the last 12 months but uh, there's plenty of exposed form and uh, for those who listened to hamish um i think it was last week they posted that uh, presser with hamish you know they've been putting work into these lads since they were 14 15 years old so they've got a fair read on what's going on uh, with these kids um but you know there's still a little bit of doubt because uh uh kids do develop late or develop at different uh, rates so um you know uh you are taking a bit of a risk i think this year well you i think you take a risk every draft year actually um even when you've been yeah. following them uh, because uh that there is still that uh transition from playing junior football to senior football and uh, when you look at some of the guys that have been taken even in the first three spots in, uh, on in the draft and then they've turned out to be faded. I mean, you have a look at Jack Watts. I mean, he was got, he was uh, touted as being the best thing since sliced bread and yeah, that yeah. never occurred. So, I mean, yeah. it, there's no guarantees. It's, it doesn't matter whether they played this year, they haven't played this year. And as you said, they do follow them since they're uh, probably from about the age of 13 onwards, they, they start following them if, they, yep. if, they're, in, if they're looking special. And uh, I think they'd have a fairly good idea. Um, the interesting thing is too though, Fiend, they say that this year won't be a, that good a draft and next year will be a super draft, but aren't the lads that aren't taken in this draft eligible to be taken in the mid-year uh, mid drafts? Um, look, I think so. Uh, I think anyone uh, now... I, hmm, 
not 100% sure now that you mention it, Mac. I think so, um, but uh, I'm not 100% sure because it's uh, the mid-season draft is basically to pick up kids from the, the state leagues uh, to fill a need. So um, there's no real uh, prerequisite in terms of having nominated for any draft or anything like that. So I, I, get, I can't see why not, but I, I wouldn't like to say definitively because I'm not quite sure. Yeah, it'll be good to mention it, but I think I did see the qualifications for the mid-year draft, and I thought that one of them was that, uh, or one of the, uh, it's not the only one, but one of the conditions was that you, you must have been nominated for this year's draft and not not been taken. So yeah, it could well be it could well be that uh, the the uh, draft next year may not be as good as anticipated because a lot of them might get picked up during the year if that oh, is the case. I, but the teams aren't going to have the list spots Mac you know they're not there's going to be plenty of players because I reckon we're going to be between 40 and 50 in this draft and it's going to be all over and uh, there's just not going to be the room on on teams lists to be able to basically suck it up for six months and see how these kids play in their uh, 19 year so I reckon next year not only is next year touted as being a great draft for midfielders just in terms of the talent that's going to be at draft age next year. But those overages that are going to be in the draft next year that will have a season under their belt, it's just going to be an absolute bumper draft. And and it's little wonder that so many clubs are trying to, uh, to get into next year's draft with any sort of pick that they can get. I mean, we've picked up four 2021 picks through various trades. Um, uh, other clubs have done similar. So um, West Coast, for example, they, they're... They basically not turn up. May as well not turn up this year. I think they've only got two picks in the whole bloody draft, and the first one's down at about sixty or something. So, um, you know, there's no doubt. I think that uh, next year's draft is going to be a, a a standout for a, a variety of reasons. I think it would have been anyway, um, but I think uh, the addition of probably some kids that get overlooked this year, just through lack of exposure. Um, are going to be uh, in demand if their form line, you know, show, shows or warrants it. There's no doubt that there's going to be uh, several cases of that. There's, that that's obviously will be the case. But there, I think this is going to be. Uh, it could only happen to Adelaide where you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You get, you, you get pick one, and yeah. they've got all these academy players in the first round, which won't be able to. So. Jamara yep. Hagen, he would have been out <laughs> yep. next year. Yep. And uh, then you've also got the the fact that 70% of the players That's haven't right. played. So That's right. It could it's only just Adelaide's to luck. Us. Adelaide's luck. Yep. But look, you know, um, without being doom and gloom, there's a fair chance that we're going to be in a similar position next year. Um, so uh, I, think, I think we'll have a pretty good run at it. But... Uh, yeah, interesting times. Look, uh, we need to give a shout out to Nikki, who's not uh, with us tonight. She had some prior engagements uh, that she needed to attend to. So, good day to her. Uh, hopefully, she'll be on our final cast next year when we wrap up all this drama of 2020. Um, but, Mac, why don't we, uh, just for starters, let's just review where we're at in terms of our current list. I've uh, For those that are on... Um, on YouTube or Twitch, and thanks for joining us. Those on Twitch and YouTube, I hopefully you can see this. I might just, uh, I might just blow it up a bit so that uh, people can see it. Basically, um, as it stands right now, there we go. As it stands right now, no, that's not the one that I want. Where are we? Current list. That's the one that I want. So we've got thirty-one. If you include Jackson and Mitch because they're definites to come on. So we've got 31 on our senior list, and Correct. we're full in rookies at the moment. We've got six rookies because <laughs> we uh, demoted D-Mac and Benny Davis. And Gibbs so, went on there as well. That's right. So we're um, we're pretty much but, full no, up. Gibbs, I think, comes off once we do the list lodgement, though. He comes off next year. So, unfortunately, after the rookie draft, Mac after the rookie draft so um oh probably, not before the rookie draft no 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 after the rookie draft so as it stands at the moment um the uh 
the AFL rules say that we've got to have at least uh, 36 seniors and we've got to have between 37 and 44. So at the moment we've got, with those changes, we've got 37. So we're at the minimum. Um, each club has to take at least one player in the draft this year. Um, so, um, so we've got plenty of room to take one. We've got room to take, uh, you know, up to seven players. Obviously, we're not going to do that. Um, so that's where we that's where we stand at the moment. Um, you know, if you look at our list there, I've got it up on the screen. Um, you would think if we, if we're talking about needs, Mac, you would think that. Uh, midfield is where we've got the needs. Would you agree with that? Uh, yes, I, I would agree with that. Yeah, So, and the unfortunate part about that, although there are a couple of really good bona fide mids in the draft um, and some good South Australian midfield talent as well, um, this is a tools draft and it'll be interesting to see how Adelaide go, whether, I mean, Hamish is notorious for sticking with his talent list, uh, uh, particularly at the top end of the draft. He'll go with uh, the next best when it gets to our pick. Um, but of course, we've got uh, a couple of really good tools at the, at the pointy end of the draft in uh, Logan McDonald and Riley Tilthorpe, uh, but also a couple of really good mids or mid prospects like Elijah Hollands and Will Phillips and uh, a couple of others. So. Um, it'll be very interesting to see whether our apparent need um, flows into how we actually play this draft out. Well, you know, obviously, I reckon our back line is pretty well OK. Um, and we've got young lads coming through there. Um, we, we're, well, let's, let's, let's think, yeah, run through positionally. I, I think the, the biggest area is our mids and forwards. That's, that's what I would yeah. see. Yeah, well, I mean, in terms of our defence, we've got, in terms of smalls, we've got Lukey Brown, we've got Will Hamill, we've got Miller, we've got Lucky Scholl, we've got Brody Smith, we've got Jake, oh, Jake's probably a mid, we've got DMAC on the rookie list. In terms of our mids and tools, we've got uh, Geordie Butts, Tom Diday, Lucky Gallant, uh, Fisher McMackesy, Andrew McPherson, I mean, Daniel Talia, Josh Worrell, who, who we haven't seen yet. I mean, I would suggest that out of all of our um, spots on the ground defence is something that we really don't need to worry about at this stage. Correct. Agree with that. Yeah. Um, if you then uh, have a look at the um, midfield ranks, unfortunately, it's a kind of a different story. Um, uh, in terms of senior experience, we've got Matty Crouch, Rory Laird, um, Gibbs has obviously gone under the rookies out, um, Paul Seedsman, who's been very hit and miss, uh, Sloney, who's been down for probably 18 months. And then uh, has. it's a bit light on after that. Chase Jones, uh, Ned McHenry, Ronan O'Connor. Uh, those three lads are yet to really set the world on fire. Ronan hasn't had an opportunity as yet. Uh, Harry Schomburg obviously looks promising. Uh, and Benny Keyes, yeah, probably the rest, Benny Keyes, probably the best of that lot at the moment. So there's certainly scope. Uh, in the midfield and a, and a glaring need in my opinion for some class in that midfield well that's that's unarguable and uh, and to you know the way I've got my, my the way I've been looking at the draft and what I've got down here on paper here that basically is that uh, who we take at the uh, beginning and after that we're basically concentrating around the middle area yeah so I mean um there is some midfield talent around, and we'll go into it in more depth uh, shortly. But with one and nine, um, it seems to be a, a situation with the tools. So um, if we have a look at our forward line, uh, or our forward area, I guess you'd say, um, we're almost okay, depending on how you think certain lads are tracking. I mean, in, in the tool department, we've got uh, Elliot Himmelberg, um, as our main tool, uh, Billy Frampton is kind of a break glass situation, and Kieran Strawn, to be perfectly honest, and no disrespect to Kieran, I don't know why he's still there. Maybe as a backup to Riley uh, in the ruck, uh, and obviously uh, then we've got Tex and Darcy as the two sort of, I guess, leading forwards, um, along with Shane McAdam as a bit of an X factor. Um, Benny Davis not really getting a look in and back on the rookie list with a year to go on his contract. And then a, and Tommy Lynch, uh, 
sort of I think having to almost reinvent himself at the back end of his career although you know he's only 30 so he's got a, a bit left in the tank but I don't think his role is necessary uh, necessarily what it used to be um, and then you've got the smalls Lockie Murphy Tyson Stengel um, so but in terms of tall smack and, McC- and McCadam McCadam oh, moves the best yeah, no, I, said, I said McCadam as the as the X factor um, oh sorry no no that's all right you would think that this is Texas last season and you would hope that um, you would hope that uh, the coaching panel and the uh, selection committee are able to uh, transition to Darcy Fogarty it's very much like for like in those two uh, in my opinion but we could probably do with one more tall don't you think well yes and I'll tell you why I think so is because if we look at the, all the names that you've quoted none of them uh, are in our gun stage at this stage or have been guns and are, are no longer if we look at Hamilberg Hamilberg was only starting to come good at the end of the season and starting to look yeah. like he belonged there yeah. um, and uh, it, I think that he would be a very good assist player in a pocket if he had a, a proper full forward alongside him yeah. um, if we look at Fogarty well Fogarty I saw the photo of him where he had uh, you know, not a bad looking uh, figure on him. I still thought he was kind of a bit, bit, bit wide waisted, so but um, it just worked the death, it worked, worked the ass off him because he didn't really perform last year. Walker, he was very, very spasmodic and didn't perform a lot last year. As you said, Lynch had to reinvent himself and spend most of the time running into the back lines. And uh, yeah. uh, the, the little guys, well, um, they had their moments, but I think McCadam was the one that stood out. So when you add it all up, it's medi- somewhere between mediocre to okay, mm. and um, and you you know to be a decent side, you've got to actually get a better structure of better players in there, in there than that. That's what okay. I think. Yeah, I I agree with that. I mean, there's a lot of maybes in that lot, isn't there? Uh, a lot too of too many, too a many. A lot of maybes, and you know. Uh, uh, I don't know. It, I mean, Himmelberg really impressed me in the back half of the season. I thought that um, I, I, th- I thought that he, uh, you know, as soon as I jumped off him, <laughs> he started to come good. But I, I think whether he was given some coaching or whether he, it just clicked for him, uh, he looked okay. Um, Billy Frampton, I don't think he's a long-term prospect. I think he's certainly a break glass situation. Uh, a bit yes. of a opportunist uh, pickup from us last year. Uh, I, I just don't see him having enough tricks or any standout sort of uh, uh, talent. Sorry, uh, um, quality is the word I'm looking for that sets him apart. I uh, just just a good honest player. Um, you know, so if Elliot goes down or if he doesn't come on this year. Um, we're actually stuck in terms of having that tool. Um, and that hurts us from two perspectives. Not only is um, not only, only does that leave us a little bit uh, short in the forward line and a bit sort of same-same in the forward line, uh, but it also makes life very difficult for Riley O'Brien as well. Uh, it would mean that, and that's probably why we've kept Kieran Strawn on the list, to be honest. Yep, and, and also Frampton as well. Um, Frampton is a... Uh, a really, really doubly break glass and break glass uh, emergency yeah. Yeah, for, for Ruck as well. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you know, given that there are a couple of high quality, high quality uh, tools in this draft, um, you would think that one of those is going to come our way, wouldn't you think? Well, obviously, we we. We uh, and it's always the club's policy to best bid on the best player. So we will bid on Jamara Hugel Hagen, and we won't get him, and he'll go to the Bulldogs, yeah. and then we get back to what we're really all about, what our bid is all about, and we've really got a choice of two, haven't we? We've got a choice of uh, Logan McDonald from uh, Western Australia, or we've yeah. got the local lad Riley Tilthorpe, and I have to say, I mean, if, if whichever one they pick, we can't lose, in my opinion. I think they are both. That, well, they both played very well this year in terms of Riley's had a bit of injury with the groins, but uh, 
I've, I've spoken to quite a few people recently who've actually played with him and they've, they've really pumped the guy up something chronic and uh, reckon that when he's 100% fit, he's going to be really Superman. So, um, personally, I, I'm tending Logan McDonald's way because I think we have not had a full forward since the days of uh, Godra himself um, and it would be lovely to actually have a genuine full forward. But if, it, if they go the other way and they go with Tilthorpe, I'm not going to weep in my beer. There's nothing, you know, I wouldn't be crying about that. Well, uh, well, we'll go for a comparison of the two in a minute because I think it's a really good uh, conversation to have. But my early thoughts are, I, I'm, I've been a massive fan for um, uh, uh, for Logan for quite some weeks now. But, you know, uh, Riley Thilthorpe, uh, Thilthorpe, I should say, He's no slouch. He's he's two hundred centimeters. He's very quick. Two hundred one um, now. <laughs> yeah, he can he can take a hand in the ruck. Um, he's, he's you're starting to wonder whether he's a bit of a uh, a potential Tom Lynch um, in terms of the the attributes that he's got. Logan McDonald, to me, is almost an upgrade on Darcy Fogarty or what we thought. Darcy Fogarty would be at this stage of his career so I think in terms of my my, my judgement in terms of um, just flat out playing ability I think Logan McDonald's going to be a champion and I think Riley Thilthorpe could possibly be a champion but uh, is most likely going to be an extremely good AFL player but when you have a look at our list and you have a look at who we've got in there, um, if they take Logan, are they almost saying to Darcy, well, we've lost faith? No, not really. Uh, no, no, not at all. Uh, well, the question, that... I, I guess, sorry to interrupt, but I guess the question is, can Darcy Fogarty take... and a player like Logan McDonald play in the same forward line with Elliot Himmelberg? Can those three play yeah. in the same forward line? Bearing in mind that uh, this will be Walker's last year, I'd say yes. Uh, I'd say yes, because I, I see... Um, uh, if you look at the way McDonald plays, he as he, he likes to compare himself or his style of playing um, to St Kilda guy... Um, Nick Rewalt. Nick Rewalt. Rewalt. With, you know, making lead, double lead, triple lead, backwards and forwards, massive work rate... Um, mm. And watching the, these highlights, that's exactly what he does do. So that leaves Hebelberg. One of the things we've always had problems is we've never had the tool in the square that can actually either mark the ball or at least bring it down to the forward uh, forward boys. So yeah. I think I think those two can work very well together there. And then you you know with a couple of crummers around them. Uh, so that that moves Fogarty up the field for me, and that puts him into Walker spot. Uh, so Fogarty might have a bit of a, uh, a year where he's in and out the side, but uh, unless his form demands that he be picked, and if he does, he may be playing on even on a flank. So um, he, I mean, Fogarty's an interesting one because if we if, if we do go for Logan McDonald and if he comes to the side straight away, and that's not guaranteed, of course, but presuming that he does, then uh, Fogarty, I think, is the boy that's most you know got most of the onus on him to prove something. Well, and that's that's my point, I guess. I I, I wonder. Um, I, I think Logan McDonald is going to play high. I think you'll see him getting up the ground and then and then coming back. Yep. He, his strength Correct. will be his strength will be his ability to um, repeat lead um, and get to dangerous positions on the ground and run his opponent uh, off his legs. Um, Darcy is a bit more of a stay home. Um, he certainly doesn't have the fitness at the moment to to be that style of a player. So you've almost if if you had those three in the mid in the in the team, you you've almost got to you've got to play Himmelberg up in my opinion because we need that link across the half forward line. Um, but that that leaves Darcy as basically the man inside inside thirty basically, um, and I think. In order to do that, Darcy's got to become a little bit more explosive off the lead. He's got to be able to push off and get separation in the first three or four steps. And I think that's something that he has struggled with. Um, but I don't think he's been helped by 
um, tax being in the team either. So anyway, look, I've put the um, I've put the draft order on the screen for people that are watching on YouTube and Twitch. Um, obviously, we're in a good position, but I just wanted to talk to you about a couple of uh, possible moves, Maka, um, in terms of how we might be uh, angling towards maybe using some of our lower picks to get up the draft. You got yep. some thoughts on that? Well, I have. I have. The, when you look at who we might target, um, North Melbourne, we could target them, and we'll come back to that. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe Sydney will come to the party because um, they have an academy player who will probably go around about the six, seven, eight mark. And uh, whereas if they keep their pick three, they can get the centre half back they want, who's the best centre half back in the draft, and get their academy player. So I can't see th- uh, Sydney party with, with pick three. Well, so let's look at let's means- look at Sydney just quick. Um, they've got 4,085 points, including pick three. So if you take pick three away, they've got about 1,800-ish, which means uh, with the 25% discount, they can basically get down to Adelaide's pick nine before they have to worry about anything. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, so that's why I don't think, I don't think they'll part. Mm. The so danger for them... The danger for them is Essendon, I think, in terms of Braden Campbell, because Essendon have got six, seven, eight. They do, and, and they probably will bid on him. So let, let's say, for example, that uh, Essendon uh, bid for Braden Campbell at pick six. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that means that Sydney have got to cover 1,751 points at picks. Uh, sorry, with the discount, 1,400 points. So Sydney at the moment have uh, 34, 37, 43, 48, and 60. So let me just plug those in. What did I say? Um, 34, 37, 37, 34, 37, 47, 47, 48, 43, 48. So they've got enough points to match Essendon at pick six. They don't have I've worked enough. it out, and from my, from my point of view, that's, that's why they're not going to be panicking. Yeah. Uh, the only, really, the only dangers on Campbell is North Melbourne at pick two. Uh, they'd have to come up with 2,013 points, which they don't really have. Um, uh, uh, where are we? 60, I don't think, gives them much. Yeah, so they wouldn't be able to match... North Melbourne at two. They obviously wouldn't be able to match us at one. But anything after no. that, they're able to match. Well, so, North Melbourne, obviously, they're going, to, they're going to take the tool that we don't take because they need him. They yeah, need and him. I think that's the gamble that North Melbourne aren't willing to take. They just absolutely need a tool and they'll take one of McDonald or Thilthorpe, in my view. They won't worry about Campbell. So it looks like Sydney is safe with Campbell after pick two, um, which which really then, uh, in, in terms of our ability to get it up, up the draft, I don't know, what are you thinking, Mac? Well, um, there's two possibilities in my opinion. One is uh, North Melbourne, and uh, and they, they, there is still a couple of tools after uh, the first two. And oh yeah, there are, there good, are. Yeah, Cox is good, a very good prospect. Pretty nice one. Yeah, but um, I would be prepared to offer an offer this to both North Melbourne and Hawthorne because I can see they them as the only possible ones that would be advantageous to us because I still think that Hollands is not going to go in the first three. Uh, and I might be totally wrong, but I think the two tools are going to be one and two. Yeah, I think the centre back I've got his name. He's yeah, going Gran- to Granger Sydney. Barris is going to go at three to Sydney. They've had a lot of interest. Yeah. Although Sydney have made a little bit of noise about Riley Thilthorpe, but I don't. I, I'm like you. I don't think he gets to three. No, and then uh, no, and I think then uh, Hollands will be at four. So yeah. Uh, therefore, we've really got North Melbourne, and, and apparently we are talking to clubs who won't answer us until draft night. So no. yeah, uh, and uh, I think what I would be offering is nine. 23 and 
the uh, second second round of Nick for next year of Melbourne, right? Um, which leaves us clean with our own picks. But and, but now if you work out the draft points on nine twenty three, and if you say that Melbourne are going to finish say uh, round about uh, ninth next year, eighth ninth, um, if, if from the point of view, uh, point of view, it, we're giving scads more points than what pick two is worth or pick four is worth. But it's not a, really about giving like for like because when you ask, when you want to trade up, you've got to get, you have to give, in my opinion, at least a third more. Yeah. Well, if you if you if you speculate and say that Melbourne's second round of next year is pick twenty five, for example, um, that gives that means uh, and then there's no uh, discount there. Just right, around the same, same around about eight hundred. So we're talking about three thousand and forty points. If you're talking nine twenty three out of this draft and um, uh, twenty, say twenty five out of next year, pick yeah, four is worth two. I think it comes three thousand and forty. Um, pick four yep. is worth two thousand and thirty four. So that's a that's a premium of a thousand points, Mac. Yeah, yep. And I'll be prepared to pay it to get Holland because uh, you are right that he's. Uh, I think he'll develop more into a mid uh, over time, but he's uh, to me he's a he's a junior Stevie J. He's uh, that type of player that uh, will roam the forward lines and do the magical thing, and then he'll have his little burst in the middle and he'll do some magical stuff there as well. So um, yeah, I really would like to get him at four. If we got if we got one of the two big boys, say it's McDonald and him, and then yep. take two good mids down the track, we've had a hell of a good draft. Yes, uh, and I like the fact that you're hanging on to uh, 22 um, in that particular deal. I think there is enough talent uh, mid-draft still, even even considering that there's enough exposed talent between the WA and the SA boys. I, I, I'm i particularly keen on uh, Caleb Poulter. Uh, I think there's yes, just something, ab- something about him and his, uh, his size really appeals to me, 192 or whatever. Um, you know, and giving away nine might actually uh, take us away from Poulter. I think he might go top 15, you know. Um, I think he's just snuck up and he's got a lot of exposed form. Uh, played a right in the All-Stars game at the end of the season. Did a right in the combine. So um, I don't know whether he gets to 22. Tom Powers, another one who's just an accumulator. He's a ball magnet. Um, on the know, money. Yeah, on the he's money. very, very much... Um, uh, a, Matt Crouch with a bit more finesse, I would say. Um, Mac, it probably... Oh, his kicking is not too finesse. He's got to improve his kicking a little bit. But, he, but boy, can he get the football. Gets he the agate get the and, and, and by hand, he's particularly good. Particularly yes. good. Um, oh, that's where you're getting the Matt Crouch for a comparison, yep. Yeah. Um, the, the difference between Powell and, and a Crouch-type player is that Powell can sneak forward and kick a goal. Um, so he does. He does. He can hit the scoreboard a bit. So um, I really like power. I've liked him from a long way out. And so there's look. There's a, that's just a couple. And as I said, we'll go through. Um, we'll go through uh, some individuals in a little minute. But so th- there's a little bit of talent there. Um, Archie Perkins is another one uh, that I don't think will get to 22. But I think uh, at if we happen to hang on to nine, he might be in the mix as well. Um, although a bit of a flight risk, um, Archie, unfortunately. Um, so uh, yeah, Vardy mentions that Tom uh, Matt Tom Powell is uh, Matt Powell's son. Matt Powell, obviously, an ex uh, Adelaide player for a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, <laughs> he said he got knocked, got knocked out in his first two games for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a uh, bit of a connection there. Um, all right, so uh, in terms of other movements, I I would expect, uh, obviously, that we will bid on uh, Jamara at pick one, uh, which takes us down to uh, pick two. Western Bulldogs have got enough points to uh, to cover us there, and we'll obviously, uh, and they've obviously made a few moves uh, during the pick swap season since the trade period just to get themselves right in that regard. That'll pretty much wipe yeah. them out. Um well, let's interrupt there, Fiend. I think mm. it's a good re- I'm actually quite happy with us dropping back to pick two because all the pressure is always on pick one. 
And I'd rather be our, our guy be pick two because there's a lot less pressure at pick two than there is at pick one. Mac, the focus you know, is all on. Mac, I think that's... I, I see where you're coming from on that one, and I've heard other people say the same. Um, but I don't, I don't think kids think that way anymore. I, I think, I think they're far more happy to embra- embrace uh, that uh, moniker of being a pick one, if you like. Logan McDonald, I've heard Logan McDonald talk, and I have no doubt that he would handle the pressure of a pick one even in the Adelaide Fishbowl, with, without missing a beat, I think Elijah Holland's much the same, would would not bat an eyelid at being the number one draft choice. Yeah, um, well, they're so two good examples, ones that probably could. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's such a big deal anymore. I, I really don't. And to be honest with you, if you're going to come and play with Adelaide, you're going to have to get used to, um, you know... Uh, being criticised and being uh, uh, dissected and your every move uh, followed and all the rest of it. So a, a kid that can't handle uh, the pressure of pick one uh, may not have the mental attributes to play in the Adelaide environment. Well, you know, even when they raise a bloody camp again three years later, they're still knocking it out. Bryce Gibbs. So why didn't someone punch Bryce Gibbs in the face? Like, just shut up oh. about it, for God's sakes. <laughs> it's done. We're done. But anyway, that's never mind. All right. Well, well, that's just the type of example of the, of the stuff that you do have to put up with when you're in Adelaide. Well, and that's right. Um, and But that's kind of what I mean. You, you're going to have to put up with that whether you pick one or pick 50. Um, so I don't necessarily... I mean, I, the, it's a no-brainer that we bid on, on um, Jamara at one. Uh, you just have to. You have you have to take Western Bulldogs picks away. Um, but uh, I, I'm I'm not looking at it as favourable from the point of view of Adelaide gets picked too, um, because I you know I don't think it makes a lot of difference. Um, just before we move on to individuals, Mac, if we just have a look down the list, and uh, I'm just I'm interested. Essendon fascinates me. I wouldn't if I was Essendon. If I was to Doro. I'd be looking to get up the draft with those three picks. Um, do you see that happening at all? Do you see them? I see them maybe doing a deal with a Sydney or a Hawthorne or even a North Melbourne, to be honest with you, because North Melbourne North Melbourne need players. They they need players. Um, not that they Essendon re- don't. They really do. Um, well, but do you see anything happening there? Well, if you're dealing with a logical man... Um, Essen would be the team to be dealing with because of the hand that they've got and uh, you would think that you could maybe prize picks six and seven out of, out of them for pick two or yeah. maybe pick two and, and another and another later pick but yeah. um, the word around the traps is that uh, uh, DeRoto or whatever his name is he wants to hang on to those, those, those pick six, seven, eight and I guess there's when you look at it, if you take the, the, the look at the players that are available at six, seven, eight, he can get a pretty good hand of players at six, seven, eight. So, I I don't think he wants to reduce his number of picks, and uh, you know, and at well, number of quality picks. So my guess is, if only I'm only going by the reports I've read, yeah, he's probably un- unlikely to uh, to trade. Yeah, so, six, seven, uh, and eight for I've, two and eleven, you'd almost do it though, wouldn't you? Um, oh, no, well, Essendon won't. I'm, I don't think Essendon would. Um, Why wouldn't you? Well, Bill, well, Why wouldn't you do 6, 7, 8 for 2 and 11 to get your hands on McDonald or Thilthorpe? Particularly well, considering did. Essendon have absolutely been destroyed in terms of tools. They've well, probably that, got a tool is, left. That's probably the only reason why they might do it because he always wants to be the one that wins by 100 miles in every trade. Um, yeah. So that that's 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 why I I'm I've got my doubts with Essen and Will because he, he always wants to be a massive winner, not just a winner, a massive winner. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't. He's not a win-win kind of guy. And you know, it makes me laugh with Dodora because he's held up as this you know this tough negotiator and all the rest of it. He's been list manager there or thereabouts for 21 years at Essendon. And how many premiership sides have they put together in that time? None. 
in fact, they look, and they probably went just about their worst uh, shape for a very long time at the moment. Exactly. So, but, so uh, who but, cares if he's a tough talk, negotiator? So when you talk about tools, though, you've got this there's a young lad called Cox, which is... Uh, Absolutely. He's got a lot, yeah. yeah, so he's one. I think he'll be on their list, I would think. And yep. uh, that's why I don't think they're going to move forward either. No, well, you know, um, aside from that, I mean, Gold Coast have, sh- have said that, that, I mean, they don't really care about this draft, <laughs> I don't think, Gold Coast. So their pick five might be uh, gettable for something or other. Um, they've only got three picks in the draft and only two real meaningful picks, five and 37. Yep. So, you know, Collingwood, I think, are another one who might be looking to get up the draft, but I don't see how they do it with only two first-round picks, 14 and 16, and then right all the way down to 65. So, um, Well, I was going to raise them, uh, Fleen. Um, yeah. Now, let, let's just say we, we, we have our pick one. Um, would the Crows uh, trade with Collingwood picks 9 and 23... Or their uh, what have they got? Have they got fourteen and sixteen. They got fourteen and sixteen. Yeah, yeah. But nine and twenty-three for fourteen, sixteen, and their first round next year. Oh, I think they would, but I don't think Collingwood would do that. They might. They might. They want to get up there early, and there's not too many other people are going to trade with them. For I don't know, Mac. Uh... No, but I mean, you don't, it may not happen, but, you, but that's the offer. They have been talking with Collingwood. That, yeah, that, no, that no, no, I, I, no, no. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I don't. Uh, I, I would imagine a deal with Collingwood would be nine for 14 plus their first rounder. I don't think you'd get 16 out of them in that trade. I think you get well, you, nine for 14 and next year's first round, I think. Well, I. I, I see. I, I would play really hard, but I wouldn't be doing it unless I, I'll give them nine and twenty-three. But I want both their fourteen and sixteen. And the reason I want that is to pick up these midfielders. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's those mids that we were talking about earlier. They are in that sweet spot, uh, at the back end yeah. of the first round. Um, you, you're right. Um, but Collingwood have their own needs in that regard, Mac, and um, they'd be eyeing someone like a Perkins I think and I guess we've got to consider what sort of value uh, are they getting by moving up to 9 from 14 uh, in terms of the type of midfielder that they're going to be looking at at 9 well that's true that is true um, and uh, that but they they they're the ones that are driving they 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 more they want to get up more than, in, than Look, uh, we want them to trade them so therefore we only thing you offer them something that's fairly ridiculous. That's what I'm getting no. at. Look, I think the chance with Collingwood is that they trade with Gold Coast. I wouldn't mind betting that they give 14 and 16 plus next year's first for five, and I reckon that almost that would almost get them over the line. Three first round picks, um, potentially, you know, one in the top ten in next year's Super Draft uh, for. Uh, pick five I reckon I, if I was uh, Gold Coast I would seriously consider that oh if I was Gold Coast I would yes um, yeah Collingwood were very erratic in the training period uh, thing, so I'm not oh, they're, the a mess. They're, they're a mess they're a mess and we won't go into all the personal stuff going on down there but uh, I think they're in a bit of a transition period. I think there's a few power struggles going on at that club, but um, you know, so uh, whether they've whether they're organised enough to be able to wangle something like that, I'm not sure. But I, I honestly think that Collingwood would be would be looking at maybe Hawthorne or Gold Coast um, or one of Essendon's picks. Um, I, you know, Essendon might be uh, happy to give away pick six for pick 14 and 16 and the next year's first. Um, you know, with a bit coming back the other way to, to Collingwood. So I think there are, well, there are clubs there are clubs above us that could probably... Uh, and Essendon, having those three picks, it gives them a little bit of uh, leeway. And um, I think there are a couple of clubs probably positioned a little bit better than us to entice those two picks out of Collingwood. 
Well, and that might be the case, uh, Fiend, but uh, all I'm saying, that's how I'd play it. If, if it Oh, yeah, no, um, you'd have a crack, no doubt about it. No birthday presents, you know. Um, you want you want something that we that you think is better than yeah. you than you pay for it with a with, with a fair premium. Yeah, um, yeah. And and apart from Collingwood, I can't really see anywhere where we're going to trade down, uh, except maybe with pick twenty two because I reckon they'll have a bit of a pause at the end of the first round, and then somebody I'm sure as always as always happens is going to realise. Shit, we haven't got. We missed out on so and so, and he's still sitting there. And yeah, uh, maybe so not so much this draft though, uh, um, Mac. Sorry, I just hit the wrong screen there. Uh, maybe not so much this draft because, as I said, I don't. I don't reckon we're going past 40, 45 players. And um, you know, I. I don't think there's going to be a lot of late draft smokies, if you know what I mean. I think there's going to be a lot of shuffling around for the NGAs and the father sons and whatnot. But I don't think there's going to be a lot of late draft smokies because I think clubs will be prepared to either let them go through to the keeper or or pick them up in the rookie draft, rather than uh, worry too much about trying to get them in the in the in the thirties. You know what I mean? So I I don't know whether the push for that is going to be the same as what it usually would be in a normal draft um well if they say let's say there's 55 players taken in the draft in total yeah um what is it is there 15 academy players uh that i can't tell you i think it is around about that number around about the 15 with father sons and uh, academy players yeah that leads that's still at least 40 players to be taken and uh which means you're going out to pick 55, and pick 22 is still a, a long way to go to pick 55. Mm. So that that it, I always think it's a very good strategic one because for two reasons: one, we can review what what we maybe missed out on. We, you know, we might have uh, we because don't get there's a jump from nine to 22 if we stay as we are. That's th- yeah 13. Yeah, and there could easily be a player that hasn't been taken that we had on our list much much higher yeah so strategically can help us and or alternatively uh i have no doubt that we will get bids for 20 pick 22 if we still have it at that stage and we'll get bids because somebody will see there's somebody that's on their list that hasn't gone and they haven't got a pick for the next six or seven picks or something like that they don't and they don't want to miss out so yeah the trouble is that we don't I think I think any any move on twenty two would have to involve next year's draft, Mac. That's the only yes. way that if if we don't do something to get up the draft early with with nine and twenty two, I think twenty two then became becomes a bargaining chip into uh, the twenty twenty one draft. Um, exactly because we no exactly because we don't getting it. Yeah, we don't need any more picks lower down the order. We've got plenty of picks, so um, it would be. Uh, and I don't think twenty two gets us. Uh, in terms of relative value, I think 22 probably gets us 30 in the 2021 draft. I don't think anyone would be prepared to go like for like, um, simply because of the quality of that draft. Um, oh, well, but I, I think yeah. Melbourne did. look at what Melbourne did. Look what Port Adelaide have done. They've they've, they've put no value on it. Yeah, but I mean, I've, I I don't. Some people trade just for the here and now, Fleet. Even though yeah, well, that's that, very true. That's right, and uh, I mean Melbourne. I don't think Melbourne have ever been a good trading club. I think they've been terrible, to be honest with you. Um, some of the reads that they've made on players, going all the way back to poor old Jackson Trengrove and uh, Jack Grimes and Jack Watts and you know all those other Jacks. Um, <laughs> you know they're they're Jack of it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm look. I don't know. Um, 20, yeah, look, I'm, I'm 22 really, levers really, are sitting really, in. Sorry, That's on. what I was really getting at. 22 is the bargaining chip uh, to get somebody's first rounder. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was getting at. All right. Well, look, how about we um, just have a look at some... Uh, why don't we just have a look at some individual players? We might just do this quick, com- quick comparison with... Uh, and apologies for the hot rod out the front of my house um might just have a quick look at what's going on with um uh, what's going on there 
Sorry, keep talking, Mac. I'll just get this set up. Well, yeah. Well, the other thing I, I think we, I'd like us to have a look at is if but let's say we don't trade any of our pigs and we've got one, nine, 22, 23 and 40, uh, who we might take at those particular positions because bearing in mind that I think uh, we have a need for, I think, uh, well, obviously Logan McDonald or or Thilthorpe, uh, whichever the club goes with, um, and we're saying McDonald, <laughs> the club might say it differently, but but then then we're looking at we've got nine, we've got twenty two, twenty three, and forty. And well, let let let's have a look at some individuals, and I want to uh, give a big shout out to. Uh, um, AFL Draft Central, uh, who I'm using uh, tonight. Um, if anyone hasn't gone to Draft Central, it's an amazing resource for information on players. Um, yeah, I hope they don't mind us uh, using their uh, website tonight. Um, but go to uh, draftcentral.com.au. Also follow them on Twitter, uh, they have a really good Twitter feed as well, so uh, a massive shout out to Aussie Rules Draft Central uh, I've just got Logan McDonald's uh, stats up here uh, as reported by them uh, 196 centimetres so not that much shorter than uh, than uh, Thilthorpe uh, and he's still growing by his own admission thing, he reckons he's got another 2 to 3 inches in him yeah, 86 uh, kegs 86 kegs, so could probably do with a little bit more weight on him um, yeah. but what I like about McDonald is that he doesn't waste anything he doesn't waste a disposal he's very good uh, at making the most of his opportunities if you watch his highlights um, you know he, he's a one grab player he's pretty good below his knees his uh, disposal is very good particularly by foot um, and uh, even though he could probably afford to develop a little bit more physically in terms of his strength at waffle level, um, by and large he was able to compete with the uh, with the men pretty well. Mm. No argument so, there. No. So um, you know, uh, AFL Central have got improvements listed at explosiveness, and that's probably the one thing that I noticed when I was watching that. He's not a burst lead-up, um, and that's where the comparisons to Revolt comes in. Revolt was never a burst lead-up. He would just run people ragged, and so uh, after the fifth lead, the, the his opponent just couldn't go with him. Um, and that's yeah. probably where where the comparison he comes would, from. If he had been able to kick straight, up, Nick Revolt would have been one of the greatest players of all time. Oh, yeah, and it was such a shame uh, because... But he was an exceptional player, exceptional player. Uh, and if if Logan is half the player that Nick Rewalt was, he's going to have a very good career. Now let's uh, take a look at Riley Thilthorpe. Uh, 200 centimetres, probably still growing as well. 100 kegs, so far more physically developed than uh, Logan. Um, he's athletic. Uh, he's very good in the air. Um, he, he can cover on, the, on, uh, on ruck. Um, you know, he's obviously being 200 centimetres, he's uh, not as agile as a, as a smaller lad. Uh, but there's a lot to like about Riley Thilthor. Both Logan and Riley have played the majority of the year in seniors. Um, and Thilthor, really, f for the Bloods, got thrown to the wolves by, uh, by, by their coach. He did. He played for the bottom team as well. And... Uh that's the other thing. McDonald was playing for a top team, and uh, Billthorpe playing for the bottom team. So, um, another thing, in, uh, which is a plus in Billthorpe's favour, uh, as I said, I've spoken to a couple of guys that played with him, and uh, they reckon for a big guy, he's just phenomenal at ground level, mm. and he's actually uh, a rarity. He's a, a tall guy, you know, two hundred one centimetres, and he can kick with both feet, <laughs> which yeah. is uh, that in itself is quite astonishing. So. Very athletic, very mobile, and uh, he's, he can really dominate a game. He's certainly on his way up and through the grades. He's done, he has absolutely dominated games. This year, uh, playing against the men, he's been doing with sore groins as well. Yep. Um, and which finally brought him to a halt. Um, but, you know, I won't be disillusioned if we get him instead of Lo uh, Logan, McDonald. Um, I just don't think we could lose. We're going to get a good player either way. I agree, but they're very different, Mac. Very different players. 
Um, I know well, Peter Jay is a massive rap for Riley Thilthorpe. Uh, Peter's obviously a Westies supporter, so he's seen a bit of him. Uh, but he's a massive G for Riley Thilthorpe. And, you know, I, I'm like you. I wouldn't be disappointed with either of them. Um, I think... Uh, I think Thilthorpe fits into our team as it stands right now, better than Logan does because I think Himmelberg and Thilthorpe can play in the same in the same uh, forward line. I'm not sure whether McDonald and Fogarty can. So, um, but certainly if you had Thilthorpe and uh, Himmelberg in your forward line, that, that's a pretty, that, all of a sudden, that's a very tall forward line, isn't it? Well, it is. It's a towering one, actually. But, um, but I, I wonder whether that is the right mix because um, Himmelberg is a uh, he's a, a forward ruck ruck relief and uh, uh, with Riley O'Brien um, that's what Phil thought would be as well and you've, so you've got two ruck release in the forward lines and whereas I think a better mix is Logan McDonald with uh, Himmelberg well, as the ruck relief well look let's let's forget about ruck relief because that's just that's just a cameo they're, they're not, happen, neither, not, yeah, I know, but neither of them are in the team to be ruck relief. They're in the team for their individual strengths. And what I the thing that the thing that I saw from Elliot uh, when his form turned around later in the season was how much he was getting up the ground. He took a lot of ball between wing and half forward, and he, did. uh, he didn't play deep very often. And it was when he started getting up the ground that he started to get his hands on the agate a bit more. And I'm just wondering whether if you had Elliot as that as that uh, higher marking forward and had Riley um, working deeper and even working the old you know the old fashioned elastic band where you, you swap them around between the two, that, that's a that's a that's a pretty formidable sort of a setup. Oh no, it certainly is. There's no doubt about it. Uh, as I said, I don't think we can lose because. Um, I think whichever one the club takes, and I think the club knows more than we do, and uh, probably understands better than we do. And I think whoever they take, we will have a damn good player in our in our number one spot. Yeah, yeah, uh, I agree. Let Let's have a chat about uh, Elijah um, because he's the probably the third option uh, at number one. 188 centimetres, 85 kegs. Um, obviously a medium forward slash midfielder. I've spoken before about the fact that he's probably um, not quite not quite ready to be um, turned a midfielder. Obviously this year uh, for Elijah was very much going to be about proving himself as a midfielder and not only did he do an ACL but, uh, you know, everything tanked. So as much as he's an extremely... Uh, exciting prospect and as much as he's got probably the most talent of anyone natural talent in this yes. year's draft there are just a couple of question marks on him you know his acl how he comes back from that um and also his ability to move up the ground and, and be a a bona fide midfielder well that's that's correct and but one thing i will say that he that even if he failed to become a bona fide 100 percent midfielder uh, he just is a quality player, and this is presuming that he's not had, uh, handicapped by the AS, uh, ACL injury. Because, yep. as I said, he, he's a Stevie J. I, I just watched his highlights, and he does it so naturally, so easy. And he, yeah. And he does, and he does things other players wouldn't expect. He is class. Yeah. He's just sheer class. And uh, yeah. and another thing, you know, we have an interesting situation. We've got three lads who would like to be our number one uh, <laughs> I know yeah. all these people saying oh no one wants to come and play for Adelaide well the top three bloody draft prospects all would love to come and play for Adelaide you know uh, three both, different states both three Holland states. and well, both Holland and Thilthorpe are, are Crows supporters um, and uh, Logan McDonald said he's quite you know be quite comfortable coming he'd to Adelaide, be so. number one <laughs> yeah so it's, so it's a rarity but yeah. the, uh, the one reason why I think it might be Logan McDonald is that he spoke, Phil Thorpe and Holland's been spoken to twice and Logan McDonald's been spoken to three times. Yeah. So, um, but then contrary to that is just to throw a, a little bit more mystery into it is that uh, they, 
were waiting, uh, according to uh, our, our draft boss, they, they were waiting for uh, injury reports on certain players, and we know who they are. That, that's yep. uh, Phil Hook and Holland. Yep. So, look, we don't know who they're going to pick, but all we know is they're going to get a good player, and we presume it'll be one of the tools. That's what that's what we yeah. think. Yeah. I, 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 um, the analogy I'm, I'm going to use on this is... Uh, yeah. The, the old theory that if you if you're struggling to make a choice, you uh, toss a coin, uh, and you know heads being McDonald and tails being Thilthorpe, and when the coin comes down, if you're happy with how it came down, then you've made a good choice. If you're not happy with how it's come down, then that you've kind of answered your own question, haven't you? So you definitely have. Yeah. So look, there are a couple of other prospects. Obviously, I'm not going to worry about um, talking about Jamara. Uh, or, or Hagen or whatever his name is because I mean that's he's just Eagle, out of Eagle Hagen yeah Eagle Hagen yeah but Will Phillips is another genuine um, midfielder 180 and 80 kegs um, just like very nice uh, nice move huh? yeah just like Tom Power just a ball magnet um, I feel that I feel that he probably lacks a touch of class Macca just lacks a touch of class but he just gets the agate uh probably a bit tom mitchell like in my view someone like a little bit your way yeah no i'm I'm a little bit away i he wouldn't be the one that i would take anyhow but uh, but there are apparently uh there's a lot of clubs very keen on him so you know i I might be wrong one of the reasons why there's a lot of clubs very keen on him i think is because he's probably the first genuine midfielder in the draft order uh, if you consider that Elijah is not a genuine midfielder, I think if you want a bona fide midfielder, um, Will Phillips is the one that you take because he's the he's the the first real genuine midfielder. Um, there's a couple of others uh, in there. Uh, Tanner Bruin, I was a bit of a G four, but he's uh, you know got that query with his um, with his knee. He didn't do an ACL, but he's had knee problems. Uh, for the last 18 months really uh he would be the other one that i'd be having a look at uh if i was in that mid section of the of the first round looking for a uh looking for a midfielder um there he is uh 183 74 kegs uh very clean tanner bruin very composed good good uh foot skills and doesn't mind getting in amongst it um maybe a little bit slow maybe uh but I can't, apart from that he's uh he's pretty good um archie perkins as i mentioned earlier is another one uh who i think will interest people mid-draft simply because he's just uh he's just a bit of an excitement machine i think archie perkins once 186 77 kegs um, he's just a very powerful kid and he's got uh, some good attributes probably doesn't get the ball as much as what you'd like uh, but when he gets the ball Macca he's uh, he's pretty good with it and he does some specky things so um, I'd expect him to go in the top tier I, I wouldn't mind betting that Archie Perkins is very much on Collingwood's radar um, well, more, the, I guess more importantly theme, around the nine position where we sitting and not you know just ignoring the academy players etc where you were obviously looking at a midfielder there well put it this way there's there's some tools um mid draft um that deservedly uh, sorry mid first round that will deserve deservedly go um because uh, and you mentioned nick cox Nick Cox definitely. Oh, he, um, I think he, I think he's Essendon bound. That's why I think. I reckon that's why they'll keep their six, seven, eight, and he'll he'll be one of them. And that, in other words, they'll probably get themselves a midfielder, uh, Cox, and uh, probably uh, maybe even a pure defender. So uh, they get they get you know that covers all their bases. Then so that's why I think they'll be they'll hold their, their draft picks. Yeah. Um, but, so, well then. I, I think we're definitely going to go a midfielder at nine. I think there's no... And a pure midfielder. So, who are you looking at? 
uh, look at nine. Well, the first thing, if we've still got nine, Mac, the first thing that's going to happen is that we uh, bid on Lockie Jones. That's the first thing that's, that's going to happen. Very first thing we do, mate. Yep. Uh, it, it's a lay down I, I wouldn't be surprised if Lockie Jones got bid on a bit higher actually um, but if he gets to if he's still around at 9 we will definitely bid on Lockie Jones in my opinion um, I don't think there's any uh, any doubt about it um, but after that it's a bit of a crap shoot I mean I've been I've been a uh, I've been a fan of Nathan O'Driscoll I think he offers a point of difference in terms of this field, this year's draft class. Uh, he's 187. He's a lefty. He's a bit rangy, uh, but he's very good uh, on his uh, in terms of his uh, ability to um, get his own ball. And I, I kind of like him, and he's really he's really good. Uh, I, I think he'd be really good. He, very much a Simon Goodwin in my opinion, if, if you have a look at how Simon used to play. O'Driscoll, I think, is going to be much the same. He's got a booming kick. He, he can... Uh, he, he's got a little bit of toe, although he's probably a little bit more one pace than what I'd like, uh, but he can go all day. I, I like him, uh, even though many pundits have got... Cal Toomey doesn't even mention Nathan O'Driscoll. Um, no, he doesn't, uh, does he? No, and hasn't. And I've asked Cal the question and he hasn't replied to me, so I don't know why that is. Uh, you know, we've heard the the stories about O'Driscoll um, and McDonald being interviewed at the same time by Adelaide. Uh, they play for the same yeah. club, Perth in WA. Um, uh, 1990 Crow reckons that O'Driscoll could fall to 22. Look, he could, uh, but I'm not sure. I, I reckon I reckon O'Driscoll goes in the top 15, and if he's at nine, if he's at nine, Mac. I'd probably take him personally. Who who do you think? Well, I reckon we've got going to have some choices there, and yeah, I've listed I've listed the possibilities to discuss with you. There, there's Perkins, yeah. There's Brune, there's yep. Powell, there's Cook, and no Driscoll, and I'd yep. even throw in possibly McRae as well. What about Poulter? Well, I'm well. I'm would you go I'm Would you go as high as nine for Poulter? I don't think he's a pick nine. I don't think he's a pick nine. That that's one of the reasons why uh, I wouldn't have been that upset of getting hold of uh, both of uh, Collingwood's picks at fourteen and sixteen because yeah, I think yeah. the players that we're talking about fit very neatly into that category. But you know what, Mako, so, I can recall us having this discussion last year, and I have a massive problem with anyone rating a player, not taking a player because they don't think that he should be taken there, because in my opinion, point. it's a good point. In my opinion, if you want a player and he's there at your pick, then you take him. I, I, I just don't see... And look, I think we've done this in the past. Tommy Duday went higher than what uh, people expected him to go. Yeah, uh, no, Adelaide, Adelaide pulled the shock on that one. And yeah. uh, uh, personally, if it's me, just uh, and, and we only go on limited knowledge, what we see, uh, sure. videos and, and comments, etc. cetera. Um, uh, and I wouldn't be taking Brune out of that list that I, the ones I look. Cook is a bit of a chance because he looks like he's a, what what I would call a, a person in the process of bl uh, blooming and blossoming. Um, I thought he, he just he just got better and better. So I, and he's I, I think he's got a you know, use the old phrase got a high ceiling to go to. So um, yeah yeah. He's a, he's, a, he's a definite possibility. And but do you uh, take him that high? But, well. Yeah, possibly. As again, in the base, on the base, if you like him, yes. Uh, but I think probably the one I would go for is Powell because he just gets the ball. I, I'd probably take Powell at nine. Hmm. Okay. Uh, that's a lot higher than a lot of other people would say for Tommy Powell. I understand. I understand that. But I'm using the if we, you know, if the next gap is going to be 22, uh, 22, 23. Who's going? Who? Uh, Powell's not going to be there at twenty-two, twenty-three, and um, it's interesting. That's why <laughs> most of the ones I like are really they're probably really around about somewhere between the twelve and the sixteen mark, and which yeah, is why yeah. I, why I would wouldn't mind doing a trade with Collingwood because yeah. uh, 
you, you've got to work out what will fit and work for your team. And uh, you say we need a mid, but we also need certain kinds of mid. We need because we've lost Crouch, and Crouch yeah. high, high possession getter. You, you've got to replace with a high possession getter, and in and yeah. under high possession uh, possession getter. And uh, I think Powell fits that uh, that category. Um, O'Driscoll would probably fit that category. Um, so I, I would think they'd be, they'd be they'd probably the boys that would be looking at. Probably, I would think Cook, Powell, O'Driscoll, um, Perkins, maybe. Oh, no, we won't look know. at Perkins. We won't look at Perkins. Perkins has made far too many noises about wanting to study at Melbourne Uni and all the rest of it. And I, I oh, think he? there's too many red flags for me. Uh, I certainly think he's a top ten prospect, Archie Perkins. But um, yeah, I, I wouldn't touch him. Uh, I really wouldn't. Uh, the the problem is not only is this draft compromised by um, by the by the COVID situation, but there's, it's also compromised by this NGA situation. And you know you've got some really good players um, like uh, Reef McGuinness, um, who's um, I think he's Collingwood, is he? Reef uh, he's, he's our NGA, yeah. Yeah, he's a really good prospect. Uh, Gold Coast have got a really good prospect as well. Um, uh, further up the draft now. Who's that? That's uh, Alex Davies. I think he's at one ninety two inside mid. Um, you know, so a lot of these midfielders are tied up. Um, so it may, it just makes me think. I, I look. I'd be happy taking O'Driscoll at nine. I'd be, uh, I'd be happy taking Poulter. I'd be happy reaching with Poulter at nine. I'd be happy reaching with um, Powell at nine uh, because I just don't buy into he's not a pick nine. Well, who cares? You know, it doesn't it doesn't matter that you. It's like it's like saying I'm not going to buy something for that's worth twenty bucks because I've only got a fifty dollar note. You know, at the end of the day, you buy what you want to buy, and I think the draft is very much like that. You take what you want to take. And if we've got a gap between nine and twenty-two, and we know that someone like Paul Drew or Powell or whoever we're looking at is going to make twenty-two, and it's all much of a muchness between you know nine and twenty, well, you take the guy that you want, in my opinion. Well, and that you know the club will they'll have their evaluation of uh, each and every player. They'll have them on the list according to it, and uh, as you quite rightly said, they've done it before. Uh, it may not be the same as everybody else's, but they've turned out to be correct. With by Dangerfield was another very good about, uh, uh, example of that. People were surprised yeah. when we took it, uh, Dangerfield where we where we did. So, you know, if the boys have done their homework, and I'm sure they have done their homework and done lots and lots of homework, and uh, whoever they take, then I think it'll be probably out of that group we're talking about. And you know, they're always capable of pulling a surprise. But there, I don't think there are that many hidden gems. Well. It's not quite true because the Victoria boys haven't played. There could be some hidden gems, but um, yeah, I, I think at nine, I'd like to have somebody that um, I'd like. I'd like to be a midfielder that gets plenty of the ball, gets uh, in, goes in hard and in and under type. And I think that's that's the type we need at nine. And uh, I'd really like to have Polder as well. He's a, not quite an in and under, but he's a big bodied fella. Big, big and boy. He, he gets on the outside a fair bit. Um, he does get on the outside, and he's got a beautiful kick on him. Beautiful kick, that left yeah. foot kick of his. Yeah. And uh, I'd, I'd really like to have him in our side at, at the end of the day. Um, and um, I will also just... I, I'd be happy with Polder and uh, O'Driscoll. Um, and I'd really like to see... Um, I don't know what the boys out there think of this one. Uh, I'd be happy to go five picks if we don't do any trading and dealing and i'd love and i'd love to see uh, corey durden in our side because i know him yeah, personally. You're a bit of a rap for corey durden i have i've watched him for five years and uh or six years really and uh look this kid has not got one weakness in his game the one fault is nature's made him 173 centimeters but there's not a weakness in his game. Not one Has he got any growth in left in him? Can he can he break one seventy five, Mac? Do you reckon? He might sneak up there. He might sneak up there. 
but the one thing I know, all he wants to do is play football, football, football. And he, look, he's played he's played league for the last two years um, at, at, out at Central. And he had a, um, some uh, hammy issues at the at the end of last season. Yeah. Um, uh, which sort of cut his season short. But he had, as I say, he's got no weakness. He's, he is a magnificent kick on either foot. He takes an exceptionally good mark for a guy his size. He's he's fast. He's got he's got his express speed, and he, he's not frightened of tackling. He's not frightened of being tackled. He he, he reminds me very much of the guy that played for uh, the Bulldogs, except I think uh, he's much quicker than him, and will probably take a better overhead mark for his same size. I I, I think he's quality, absolutely quality, and. As a forward line, uh, as a forward player, and who would also he would also take a run on the ball as well as a mid, because um, he played all his football as a mid. He was a star mid, star mid, and um, so to me, I, I just think if we don't take Dern, we are really just letting a diamond go to somebody else. So, do you take him with our rubbish pick at eighty? No, that eighty's got to, <laughs> We have to have eighty. That's, Why? That's too, that's. Too, well, how else are we going to get um, what's his name from GWS? Uh, H- 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 Jack- Jackson. He's Hayden. going in the pre- pre-season draft, Macca. He's not in the national draft. But uh, don't you have to have a? But don't no. You, oh, no. oh no, you don't have to have a draft. But you just have to have a space, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Hately's going PSD. We could use eighty on on Corey Durden without any trouble at all. Well, we've still got forty as well. Yeah, but Durden's not going to get picked up by anyone else. He wouldn't be on anyone else's uh, radar, except maybe Port Adelaide. Well, on, on uh, the one that I was looking at, draft uh, one of the recruiters draft on the Twitter to, today, I think he had Durden around about uh, 26, 27. Yeah, I don't know whether he goes that high, Matt, to be honest with you. And that's not, that's not doubting his ability. Um, well, uh, Vardy Magic says he will get snapped up by Carlton. I think it's quite right. I don't. Th- I think if we don't take Durden with uh, say twenty three, uh, the Carlton will get him after that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you've certainly talked him up. You've convinced me. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I'm really on my radar, him. but uh, yeah, I'll be shattered if we don't take him because, as I said, this, this is a kid I know. And, and watching this, this is not. I'm not a family friend or anything like that. I just what I've watched footy all my life, and uh, uh, I've made. And I'm not going to tell you who the other two were, but I've made three calls in my life on kids when I've seen them play at junior football that they will end up being AFL players, and I've been totally correct on the other two, and I, I will be proven correct on Durden as well. Yeah, that's how yeah. confident I am. Yeah. Well, the problem then is that we have ball ace um, that we need to use 40 on uh, assuming it gets down that low Port might play funny buggers but uh, you'd assume we get down Port, there no Port won't be playing funny buggers with ball ace because they've got the situation where uh, they, they'll lose a lot of points uh, most of their points will go when uh, we, what is his name Jones when Jones has been on yeah. and yeah. after then they've still got a father son after that that they've been hoping to get and i don't know then there's every chance i'll have to go to deficit to get him so i can't see port playing any funny buggers at all yeah now they've been hanging they've been banging on in the chat maker about um stone what do you know about him well i did see that i'll be very quiet because i don't know anything about stone that's Uh, connor stone isn't it the boys talking about connor stone is it connor stone they're talking about uh, come on, boys! Just give us a little bit more detail, please. Uh, <laughs> that's... Let's have a look. I'm just going back through the chat now. Uh, Is it Stone or, or Stowey or something like that? No, Stone. Which Stone is it, Vardy? Tell me. Connor Stone. There we are. All right. So Connor Stone. I'll just put him up on the screen now. He's come out of nowhere. Yeah, he's, he's a uh, he's a smoky, 
Athletic medium forward with high level smarts inside 50 in the scope to develop further afield. 188 centimetres, 81 kegs, comes from Oakley Chargers. Uh, his strength is his goal sense finishing athleticism. Can jump uh, and is a smart footy player. Um, uh, needs to be consistent. Uh, at his best, Stone is an efficient and effective medium forward. Look, I don't doubt that he's... Uh, I don't doubt that he's good, but how many more medium forwards do we need? No, we don't. Do we, we don't. That's we why don't I, I really, really, I like dirty. He's a point of difference, absolute point of difference. Mm. Um, and just on uh, Barney Magic, I mean on Stone. Stone is Patrick Wilson. Well, yeah, I'm off him so already. <laughs> if that's the case. <laughs> oh, now Patrick's all right at Sandville. At Sandville, yes, but but uh, we, we're not after that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, given that we've got Durden, uh, given that we've got Borlase at 40, how yeah. do you think that impacts our, our ability to um, to look at Durden? Uh, well, I, I think I'd, I'd be taking Durden at 23. Um, uh, wow. And I, I would be taking Durden at 23. And I, I'm talking about if we, we've got the full hand of five uh, picks. Yeah. I'm taking one, I'm taking a tall. Nine, I'm taking a mid. Twenty-two, I'm taking a mid, and twenty-three, I'm I'm taking Durden, and at forty, I'm taking Borlase. Yeah, okay. So, what do you think about that, boys, in the chat? I'm well, I don't. In their thoughts on it. Yeah, I don't know about them, but I, I'm I'm fairly comfortable with that. Um, I don't look. I think there's enough in this draft. We've got enough picks that we're going to come out all right. I just hope that we actually are able to target the players that we should be targeting. And I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I won't be disappointed with either tall, uh, Logan or Riley. Um, I'd love to be able to work a position where we get Elijah Hollands, but I just I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I would like to have. O'Driscoll in our team because I just don't think at the moment, Macca, we have a player like O'Driscoll and I think one of the things that worked for us very well during our Halcyon days with Rue Macca and um, Goodwin was Goody's point of difference um, and being a left footer being able to come from that other side of the ground um, I'd really like to have Nathan O'Driscoll uh, I'd really like to have Caleb Poulter uh, but I don't think we can have both. Um, I'm impressed with Tommy Powell, but I don't think I, I don't think that we're going to have an opportunity for him. You've sold me on Corey Durden, and to be honest with you, Mac, I'm I'm neither here nor there on Bill Borlase. Well, the only thing I like about Borlase is that um, he he is a player on the way up, and. Um, he, and he played, he got his opportunity at league level and he did okay. And Talia is not going to play forever, so we need somebody who we can train up for the full back position, I reckon. Mm. That's but the only we've reason got, we've why got, I, But we've got players. We've got Worrell, we've got Mackesy, we've got Geordie Butts. We've, we're covered in defence. We talked about that at the beginning of the show. We're covered in defence. Yeah, but. but but uh, being a really good fullback is a specialist position, and Talia, you couldn't play him really anywhere else. He's a fullback, and that's the type of player that Paul Aids is. He's going to be that type of player, and I, and I do see him as the successor to uh, Talia. So, and coming in now would be just nice because Talia's probably got another couple of years at least in him. By the time he's ready to go, Paul Aids be ready to take over. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure he'll slot in and be a, a solid defender. I just wonder, in terms of our priorities, um, whether there's enough room. But, you know, I mean, he's an NGA. Uh, we've obviously got a lot of intel and uh, some intimate knowledge on how he plays and how he's tracking, so I'm sure if they pick him up, they will. Um, the other, I guess oh. the other smoky is uh, Tarek Newchurch, uh, Mac. Yeah, look... It what, what you watch his highlights, and that's what you're watching. You, that's what that's his game. Only get There's not much else, is, is there? No. Uh, you, when you watch 
uh, highlights out of the same game that he's playing in, mm. and uh, it's not him not focusing on him. You're watching him; he's doing nothing. He, he's not a hard worker. Uh, he's got a no, he's a player that doesn't get himself involved in the game all the time. When he does, he's he's got some magical qualities about him, no doubt about that. Yeah. He's, he, but I think he's a boy that you've got to. Uh, if, He's a rookie, in my opinion, and and I reckon what we'd have to do is move keys up onto the main list so that we can yeah. uh, take one rookie, which is New Church. Yeah, and uh, I would be very happy with that, with just taking the one rookie and that, and him being that rookie. Yeah, and Borle Borle's being our last pick, and uh, and I I think if we walk away with that sort of hand, that where we've got the one of the two tools, uh, a couple of midfielders. Stern and Borlays, we're walking away with a nice, a very nice hand, which will uh, mm. be uh, part of our rebuild, and then yeah. we can add two next year as well. So that's yeah. the way I, I see it. Tom. Yeah, I, I don't feel like we'll take New Church, uh, particularly if we end up with Durden on our list. Um, we'll have more than enough small forwards to we'll have Lockie Murphy, Ned McHenry, uh, um, the Tyson. Um, Stengel and um, you know one of either Tariq or, or Cora Durden that's plenty um, I've watched Tariq a little bit and I, I'm with you I think he's a little lazy I think he's he's enigmatic um, he could kick six in a game and then go missing for a month um, so I don't know 1990 Crow says that McHenry isn't a small forward well he's nothing at the moment mate uh, and I don't see him getting a look in in the midfield to be honest, McHenry. Absolutely nothing. I, I, I I'm shattered with the, with my, when I look at what Port Adelaide took and what we took in that particular draft, and I still think there's still hope for Jones. But McHenry did nothing to make me think that he's ever going to be of any great value to us. And yeah. look, I hope I'm wrong. I really want to be wrong, but I can only talk about what I see. And uh, they're obviously seeing it too. In that they weren't picking him. After yeah. a while, well, so the two two drafts that we tanked really that one and the 2016 draft with uh, Gallucci and Signorello and um, you know uh, one other I think we've only had one one come on out of the 2016 draft and you know uh, Hamish uh, he's done a lot right um, but he's not squeaky clean we've had, we've had a couple of wasted years because of Pahoki that's right. Um, a couple of wasted years in terms of development you know 2016 players should be pushing for the senior list at the moment and we've had no return no return out of that draft whatsoever really um and uh, the the uh, McHenry draft is looking similar looking similarly we hold out hope, hope for Chase Jones uh, but it is looking similar um so look Mac uh I think we've covered it pretty well. Is there any other players that you'd like to talk about before we uh, before we shut it down? Not really. Only the fact that you know there there are other players on the outskirts that could come you know in that uh, nine to twenty three category. Yeah, um, like McRae's brother, uh, Finley McRae. Uh, yeah, he looks okay, he, and he, he looks like. McRae's always got that ability to get the ball and to get it out either by hand or foot and uh, I wouldn't be upset if we ended up with him but I think really from my, from my point of view I think we've covered all the names that I think we're likely to take but then again I'm guessing and you know uh, Ogilvy's proved us proved us guesses wrong many many times so um, yeah what about yourself is anything have you got any players that we you think we've missed Look, no, I think I've, I, I think, I think we've covered the ones, the targets that uh, I'd be interested in. Um, I, you know, I'm sceptical about the Victorian talent this year. Um, not only because they're going to take a while to get, uh, to get going, uh, in terms of their misdevelopment for a year, but also you just don't know how these kids kick on in their 18th year. Um, you know, I, uh, I think. I think the players that we've gotten, if you uh, if you if you factor in that we're going to get Jackson Hately and Mitch Hinge as well, um, which is a very good point. Yeah, we haven't taken you know, that into account. 
you know, they're two... Uh, Jack Hately, I'm a massive fan of. I watched him in his draft year play for Centrals and he tore it up a couple of times. Uh, I I think given a bit of licence and played in the right position, he's going to be a very good AFL footballer. I'd be amazed if he's not. Uh, Mitch Hinge I know less about, uh, but by all reports he was just unlucky, stuck behind a, a, a pretty solid Brisbane midfield. So, um, you know, I uh, I don't know. Uh, Vardy Magic advertising Sensible Crow's podcast. We love Sensible Crow. Um, so uh, get around his podcast as well during the week. So, look, I think that's that's pretty much covered it from the in terms of the play. There are other players in the draft, Mac, but I just don't think they're on our radar. Um, Cox, is, Cox is one that I think is going to have a really good career. I think he's, he's a solid player. There's a couple of others. Tanner Bruin, as I mentioned earlier, I think if he can overcome his knee problems, he'll have a really good uh, career. A lot of the ones that I really like are NGAs, so you know they're kind of off your radar. Exactly. Yep. Uh, Braden Cook, I think, will be a really good pickup for Sydney, um, um, and I like the Collingwood lad as well. I think he's going to be a good pickup for them as well. So, you know, it's a bit hard to talk about them as a consequence, um, but uh, yeah, if anyone in the chat. Um, between now and draft night obviously draft night is going to be tomorrow night now if you feel like chatting along i'm going to have the discord channel open so hop into discord um as i mentioned before you don't even have to be a member of discord you can just go onto our live chat page on aflcrowcast.com follow your nose and you can join our discord channel from the website uh we'll be sitting in the afl trade and draft channel uh so for anyone who wants to chat along while the um while the draft is happening uh, feel free to do so sorry wednesday not monday did i say monday wednesday um it actually wednesday, yeah. it's wednesday which is going to be a problem for me because my son's got uh, a graduation so uh i may not be around but those who want to uh, chat <laughs> um uh, get on discord get on the afl trade and draft uh, channel and uh and get around so also for uh and we're going to do a bit of a big thank you to the, our patrons next week, Mac, uh, in our final episode. But for the Patreon, uh, for the patrons amongst the listeners, don't forget I've actually um, provided a link to the Excel spreadsheet that I've been using tonight, so you can get around that. Um, and lots of big things happening on Patreon next year for those who support us, and we're very grateful for those who support us on Patreon. Mac, I think we've pretty much done it. Oh, I think we've done it to death, mate. And um, whether we've nailed it or not, that's another thing. But then again, nobody usually does nail it, but we've done no. our best. And uh, as Vardy mentioned, get around uh, Sensible Crow's podcast. Um, he'll be around. Um, uh, I'm th- not sure when he actually uploads or whether whether he's doing it live at the moment, but he'll be around. He's a uh, uh, good insight as well. So uh, until then, mate... Uh, See you, everyone. See you, Macca. We will uh, wind up next Sunday at 7.30 and uh, we'll be able to clean it up and get ready for Christmas. Yep. Good night, all. Thanks, legends. All right, mate. See you, guys.